In this lecture, you'll learn about different types of customers, customer complaints, and customer service. You'll also discover the benefits and sources of objectives, investigate quality systems, define the quality philosophy, and explore the quality organization. To get started, let's pay a hypothetical visit to Hospital Supply Incorporated, a medical products distributor. Their customer, City Hospital, wants to buy a chemistry analyzer, an expensive piece of medical equipment. The following people at the hospital have a stake in the purchase and use of the analyzer. Physicians want reliability and speed. Nurses want ease of use and clear reporting. Technicians are responsible for servicing the equipment, so they want high customer support. The materials manager negotiates the purchase price and terms, including delivery, service, and warranty, and is also responsible for stocking disposable materials, such as tubing and various chemicals used with the equipment. So she wants a good price and on-time material delivery. Patients want quality and modern technology, and the stockroom attendants want an easy way to physically manage and dispose of materials. These customers at City Hospital are external customers. They exist outside of the organization and typically pay for products and services. To satisfy external customers, think of them as part of a subsystem. If a breakdown occurs at any part of the, of the system, it could lead to customer dissatisfaction and potential lost business. Now let's consider internal customers. These are the employees and reflect all relationships. For example, my friend John is an accountant. His internal customers are buyers, engineers, and production managers. An internal customer is anyone whom you affect with the type of work you do. For instance, if John works in an office near a production area and it's a noisy day on the shop floor, he's an unhappy internal customer. Production may not identify John as a customer because they don't provide him with anything of value. But since he creates critical reports for them, they should. Internal customers also form a subsystem like the external system as an internal supply chain. Customer feedback is an essential aspect of subsystems, so let's turn to that next. If you were to take a poll at a typical organization and ask the question, what type of communication is most welcome from our customers? The answer would probably be a really big order worth a lot of money. I doubt that many employees would say, we want our customers to tell us why they don't like our products. Yet, that's just what needs to be heard. Customer feedback helps develop solutions for current or future problems. It identifies priorities, exposes unmet needs, and uncovers opportunities to improve processes. Customer complaints are a common form of customer feedback. Let's come up with a formal definition for customer complaints. A customer complaint is feedback about quality defects. In most cases, firms take complaints seriously, but unfortunately, their methods to process and resolve problems needs improvement. Probably the most surprising aspect about customer complaints is that many of them go unreported. There are several reasons for this. First, customers perceive that the cost of complaining is high. Does this ring a bell? Why should I bother complaining? I'll be put on hold for 20 minutes, get the runaround, and then be cut off. Who needs that hassle? Customers take this position when they believe the cost of complaining seems greater than the value of resolving the problem. Second, 
Customers believe that defects are unavoidable. You may have had an experience that made you feel like this. I've had my car in the garage six times. No one has been able to find and eliminate that annoying squeak. Third, customers believe that they can solve the problem. Do you know anyone who follows this practice? Why, I'll just take that malfunctioning part out to my garage, place it on the workbench, grab my favorite tool, and whoops. And last, customers believe that complaining is distasteful. Do you ever feel this way? Whenever I call to report a problem, it causes me more stress than it's worth. I wind up feeling like the problem is my fault. The other side of this situation is when someone complains and there is no problem. When I buy something and it doesn't work initially, it's usually due to my lack of understanding. But customers sometimes complain when they install their own equipment. They run into problems because they don't read the owner's manual, they use the product in the wrong way, or they don't perform scheduled maintenance. Now that you know something about the origin of customer complaints, let's see how we can manage them. The best way to manage customer complaints is to record process and close them on a timely basis. The biggest reason why firms don't manage customer complaints properly to the customers and the company's desire is because of a faulty system. A customer complaint process should follow these three steps. Number one, identify the source of the complaint. Is it coming from a consumer, a retailer, or a distributor? This helps prioritize the urgency of your actions. Number two, record the method of the complaint. Was it a letter, phone call, email, fax, personal visit, or a letter to a magazine or newspaper? The best organizations set up a department with a toll-free telephone number staffed with live human beings, not voicemail, that registers the complaint, assigns a complaint number, and forwards it to the right individual. Number three is take the right course of action. This step is crucial. A complaint needs to be resolved as soon as possible, unless there is a good reason to believe that the complaint isn't valid. It's best to restore service by fixing the problem immediately and reestablishing goodwill. It's important to take measures to prevent recurrence by looking for root causes and the reasons for the complaint. You can see that customer complaints don't represent a clear-cut situation. People who probably have a right to complain don't, and those who shouldn't do. Complaints may not really give a true picture of product quality because there is so much customer perception involved. When possible, try to show the relationship between customers' perceptions and your product's shortcomings. An effective way to do this is by comparing internal failures or rejects with customer complaints. As a wrap up on customer complaints, it is interesting to note that the more expensive the product, the more likely it is for customers to complain. This is probably because they have higher expectations. Also, some products are prone to fail only early in their lives. Finally, products that wear out but aren't maintained properly, but are maintained properly, don't usually result in complaints. Enough about complaints. A more upbeat area is how you can generate positive customer service. Our next topic. Before you can provide high customer service, you need to know how you are currently doing. So the first step is to measure it. When you measure customer service, make sure 
you measure it from the customer's perspective. It does little good to say that you fill 98% of your customer's orders on time when your customer is unhappy and about to switch suppliers. Your measurement method must be legitimate, meaning that it matches your customer's criteria. A way to ensure this is to send your customers a copy of your customer service report and ask for feedback. Typical measures found on your report are order fill rates, line item fill rates, and days late. Order fill rates can be used to state how well your, your company delivers an entire order by the customer's requested due date. For example, if City Hospital places eight orders during the quarter and only six are shipped on time, quarterly performance is 75%, six divided by eight. This is not too good. Line item fill rates are applied to determine how well an organization delivers various products by the customer's requested due date. If City Hospital's eight orders include 456 line items and 432 are delivered on time, quarterly performance is 94.7%, 432 divided by 456. Too often, once an order is late, it becomes de-emphasized because on-time delivery credit is not received when the order is shipped. Use the days late measurement to determine how late an order or line item is when it is eventually shipped. If City Hospital shipped their two late orders five and nine days late, their average order days late measurement would be seven days. You may be wondering what type of customer service percentage is good. It all depends. The most important thing is to improve the score over time and also be at least as good as your competition. Most world-class companies strive for and achieve 98% on time and an average day's late measurement of two days or less. Other measures of customer service include installation of equipment, the moment of truth, will it work? After sales service, determining if an organization will provide service or if it will be subcontracted and availability of service parts, often a problem. To gain insights into how an organization performs in customer service, use questionnaires, interviews, and personal visits. The best way to achieve high-performing high customer service is to create a quality system our next topic.